which is interesting um, because at the beginning of the year, I think there was a lot of angst about text, which I've experienced multiple times um, teaching texts in reform settings, that there can be some angst around approaching texts because we don't mess we. In my experience, a lot of people don't necess- in the reform movement don't, don't necessarily have comfort in seeing texts. It's not a discomfort with the text themselves. It's looking at a page of text and not knowing what to do with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's been kind of fun as the year has gone on um, to kind of see how people are uh, playing with that. Um, but for me, a lot of the, the exploration has been kind of observation and and trying little things here and there. Um, it's definitely an area I I want to have more time, but grad school makes that very challenging. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, you mentioned that that being a party sort of like sharpened your identity as a reform Jew. Can you describe that to me a little bit more also? Yeah, so I think that uh, like anyone, when we're in a bubble, we don't have to explain ourselves very often. And I think uh, at parties, I had to explain myself a lot and why I was making the choices that I was making. I distinctly remember coming into uh, Dean Bernstein's office, and I brought one uh, of the Shavuot from the reform movement about Shabbat, and he had another one. Um, and like, I think he was shocked that I knew where to find them and knew what they were. Um, and I think like that process of like actually really pushing myself to 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 figure out what I stood for and what was important to me, how that was text-based, why it mattered to me, um, was all kind of the, the process for me. And I think, um, I think also like coming up against people who really, really disagreed with me, um, and having to decide whether or not, uh, the thing that I was standing up for was something I believed in or whether it was just something I'd been taught and was parroting was really a useful thing for me. Um, the, the necessity and opportunity to articulate, I think, my uh, theology and my ritual and my general Jewish practice was all an important component of uh, of that kind of sharpening experience. Um, as well, I think, as like trying trying on different hats and seeing how they felt and trying to decide whether or not. Um, the hat I was wearing was the, the right hat. Um, and I think even whether or not I could be a reformed Jew that also did other things that maybe weren't in my traditional definition of what it meant to be in the reformed community. Do you have an example yeah. of that or like of a different hat that you tried on? Yeah. Um, I mean, so last year I lived in an apartment that was, uh, Shomer Kashrut, um, which uh, was the thing was was like it was all we we knew in our apartment, so it didn't really feel challenging. I think it's actually more interesting this year. I'm in an apartment that does not keep kosher, um, and I have a partner who does keep kosher, and so it's like I think navigating that space. Um, and I think as far as like practices that are not necessarily normative per se in the wider reform community. Um, I would actually say the biggest one has nothing to do with the wider reform community, but with the HUC community, which is that I will not do homework of any kind on Shabbat. Mm -hmm. Uh, I feel really strongly about not doing work for the next week, whether even if it's reading, which a lot of my classmates who are more like Shomer Shabbat, as far as electronics go, they'll, they'll do readings. Um, I won't do any of them. Um, And I think that has been like a really interesting thing because it's, a year ago, I would have done them and just said, like, this is what I do because it's Saturday and what am I doing? Um, and I think Pardes taught me a lot about saying, like, this is actually a tradition that I really care about and it matters to me to distinguish these times. Um, okay, that's not what we're, we're doing as a class, but, like, that's what I'm doing. So mm-hmm. <laughs> have your study party and I'm going to, you know, sleep in and go to shul and go to this random lunch with our day's folks because they're the only people having lunch today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What other kinds of things do you think that you gained from your time in Keith? Um, I think a huge part of it was um, being in a space with people of all different um, denominations. 
Um, both, I think, from a learning place and an opportunity to network and build, I think, a bigger Jewish community um, in terms of both ideology and geography. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the connection with the faculty was incredible for me. Um, both of the, I think, smaller peak faculty um, and the wider parties faculty, um, I think it's really rare to find people who love the things that they love so much and aren't afraid to sit in a room and with people who don't necessarily feel the same way about those things. I, I think like it's so rare to have someone like Mayor who just loves Torah and just really believes in Torah Messini so hard. Um, and to sit in a room with people who don't necessarily believe that and still hold it as his truth and still love those students for who they are and where they are is an incredible gift. Um, and I think for me, both receiving that from him and also learning how to give that, um, is one of the things that was most important for me about my parties experience, especially as I try and think about um, what I want to do in the field of education, um, which I think I hope will not be as narrow as uh, in a strictly denominational space. I think that that lesson about how to really hold and love your truth and yet hold and love other people for their truths, um, even when you think they're completely wrong mm-hmm. is just an incredible gift of the PEEP experience and the Pardes experience also. When you went to Pardes, what did you, you sort of mentioned this like a little bit on the side, but what did you think your career path would be? Yeah. So when I applied to Pardes, my plan was to go to Pardes and go back into the camping field um, potentially to switch movements, um, to switch from the reform campaign movement into the Ramah, um, field because of the elevated, uh, level of Jewish education that happens in Ramah camps. Mm -hmm. Um, I love, I just love the camping world. I think it's such a nexus of Jewish identity development and Jewish learning and, community building that so rarely happens now in our Jewish communities. Um, But by the time I started my program at parties, I knew that my plan was to go to rabbinical school. Um, But I never, I did not apply to rabbinical school with the intent of ever becoming a pulpit rabbi. Um, I want to work in the field of education. Uh, I, I think I knew that going into Pardes, and my year at Pardes only made that mm-hmm. much clearer for me, and also made it clearer for me that I can both be a rabbi and spend six years more learning um, and apply all of that into the field of Jewish education. And did your did your ideas about being an educator evolve or change in any way while you were in PEEP? I think it became clear to me that I don't want to work with young kids Mm -hmm. as an educator, um, which I had always thought is what I would want to do. I really just am very nerdy about loving texts and loving text study and loving Gamara. um, And I think that some of those things are harder to implement with younger kids. Um, And so for me, I think just as a general, what are the things I'm passionate about working with an a slightly older population mm-hmm. um, will uh, just be more in tune with what I want to do. I also think um, we were really encouraged to think about our broader mission as Jewish educators um, while I was in PEEP. And I think for me, a huge part of my mission is training and encouraging the next generation of Jewish leadership whether that's within a Jewish context or outside of it. So I don't, I I think that there are plenty of ways in which Judaism and Jewish learning can help people be a better captain of their soccer team, uh, a better CEO, 
um, a better social worker. And mm-hmm. I think for me, a huge part of my mission as a Jewish educator is to help give people the tools um, to become leaders 